Dear Evan Hansen, yikes. It was a blockbuster musical that took Broadway by storm, had a phenomenal lead actor in Ben Platt, who won Tonys and Grammys for his leading role, and with the director of Wanda and the perks of being a wallflower at the helm of the movie adaptation, what could possibly go wrong? Right? Well, let's talk about it. And before I actually get into my review, I just want to say two things. Um, one, this is a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen the movie, um, A, you're not really missing out on much. Um, but if you do care about spoilers, for some reason, um, just go and watch the movie and then come back to this video afterwards. Or if you just don't care, then keep on watching. And the second thing I want to tell you is just where I stand on this musical. Um, I'm. It's very weird, my relationship with this musical. Uh, so I originally saw a slide tutorial for the musical just over a year ago, I'd say, uh, and I actually really enjoyed it. I thought Ben Platt was incredible, the music, the soundtrack and everything was great, and I actually, there was a time where I put it as, like, one of my favourite musicals of all time. However, in the months leading up to the musical, I've done more research, really thoroughly evaluating the musical objectively, uh, and I've realised that I think I just let the music uh, and just my love for musicals get in the way of me actually understanding just how um, dangerous this musical is. And even just watching the trail of the movie, I very thoroughly enjoyed it. Obviously, Ben Platt looked very, very strange, but I was willing to let that pass because there are more serious topics that have been discussed. I wasn't one of those people that were like, ooh, Ben Platt looks like a 30-year-old. <laughs> I wasn't like a hater or anything. I criticised his look, definitely. Um, but I was always willing to just let the movie speak for itself, as Ben Platt said, before actually judging his appearance. But now that I have seen the movie, let's talk about it. Alright, so I'm going to start this review off by talking about the good aspects of this movie. I want to start off being optimistic. Uh, so I think the cast, for the most part, um, is very, very good in the movie. Um, particularly Amy Adams and Kately Diva. I think that's how you pronounce her name. They were both really, really great. Uh, they were definitely both underutilised a lot. Um, but I think that they were still good for what they were given. Uh, and even just people that played like Alana and Jared and stuff. I thought they were good. I didn't see anything uh, particularly wrong with them. Ben Platt. I will discuss more later on in the mix section. Uh, I think he did give a very, very, very good performance. But obviously his age, we'll get to that soon. Uh, and the songs, I think, are really, really good. Um, particularly Waving Through a Window, which has always been like an audition song for me. Uh, I love that song. You Will Be Found, uh, Words Fail, and Sincerely Me. They're my four favourite songs from the musical. Uh, and I think that they were very, very well uh, sung and produced in this movie. Um, but we'll talk more about how it's actually been adapted to film later on. And the lyrics of each song are very, very good too. Uh, great rhyming and great... Just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the music is obviously probably the best part of the musical and the movie for me. And I do like that it's more poppy and less like classic uh, musical theatre songs, even though I do love them. Uh, I think it uh, helps the setting, took it too soon. And I do think that the movie was well paced and wasn't dragged out. I was always reasonably thoroughly engaged. Um, and there were also some very impactful moments uh, that do allow the audience to be engaged, um, particularly in like the third act with Alana uh, stupidly posting the image and the insane argument with the Murphys and bringing Evan into the argument stuff, as well as in, you know, Requiem, uh, and you see Zoe attempting suicide and stuff like that. All of those scenes were very, very well done, and they were very impactful and moving. Uh, and lastly in this section, I definitely think a modern setting and how social media would react to these events helped a lot to make the movie seem somewhat interesting, although pretty much everything else about the plot is obviously flawed. Uh, and unfortunately, that's pretty much all I can say about what I loved about the movie. Uh, so <laughs> let's move on to the next section, which is the mix stuff. Here we go. Okay. Let's address the elephant in the room, Ben Platt. Ben Platt's emotional acting on both Broadway and in the movie is still incredible, but not necessarily his physical acting. Obviously his age, uh, and most specifically his hairstyle, uh, does take you out of the performance as a realistic child. However, as a person struggling with anxiety, he plays him well. And I know some of the responses to these criticisms have been like, adults play teenagers all the time in movies and stuff. And I think that yes, it's it's true. Um, particularly musicals, of course, because they're teenagers easily, you know, easily, you know, grow up and stuff. And movies, of course, definitely too. However, it doesn't work for this movie. Ben Platt 
does it even pass as a teenager? Some adults do. He does not at all. And I think uh, one of the reasons that we like, or not like, but one of the reasons that we actually understand Evan is because he is so young and naive, and so you can somewhat excuse his actions. But even though Evan isn't actually an adult, he looks like one in the movie, and therefore you're like, well, you're an adult, you should know better. Why are you doing these terrible, terrible actions? And I mean, you can also say all you want about like nepotism and his ego and shit. Like that, that stuff is really, really bad uh, about the movie. But I'm not really going to discuss it because I'm going to discuss the actual movie that we were showing, right? Not the backstory surrounding it. I do think that there were other alternatives to play Evan. I think Andrew Barth Feldman is more than capable, Jordan Fisher too, but at the same time, Ben Platt does probably play the best Evan out of a lot of them, and it kind of is his baby, I understand that he said it's like, the project wouldn't have been made without him, that was a bit selfish, but I still think that no one can play it like him, to be honest, but I wouldn't have been opposed to other people playing Evan too. Although I do think that this issue in this movie is not good, it's not even the worst thing about it. <laughs> I think its actual flaws are being overlooked just to hate how he looks. It, and if there were no other flaws, even if he does look 30, I would have loved the movie. But his age only helps to bring out the actual flaws. And I think that that is why this is in the mixed section, um, because it isn't all too bad. And there are some very good um, scenes with him emotionally and stuff like that. Uh, but speaking of the bad stuff, let's move on to it. Uh, so, as I said before, the music is great, and I love the live vocals, which really help to make it feel like you're actually in the scene. Although, there's just nothing interesting nor creative with the actual way of which these songs are portrayed. Uh, like, For Forever is literally just Evan sitting down and just singing to the Murphys. Uh, Sincerely Me is literally just Connor walking around awkwardly looking at the camera. And Only Us is just Evan and Zoe just standing around in the bedroom with a few flashes to other events here and there. And not only this, but the actual perspectives of which each song took place in is just weird. Um, like, for example, Waving Through a Wind it's all like an internalized monologue and um, with Evan but then you get to like songs like only us and they're singing to each other and words fail and like you will be found is that Evan singing to the audience or is that an actual speech he's giving to them like this stuff is very confusing uh, and it takes you out of the movie too and I think that the songs sometimes actually kill the momentum of the movie. I love musicals, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's unrealistic that they're singing in a musical. I just wish they somehow kept it consistent. I uh, Like, uh, in, in the Heights, that was very, very well done. Uh, and it was very um, artistic in the way that they portrayed these songs. Um, but nothing interesting about the way that they were portrayed in this um, movie. And I think that the actual, uh, I think it's called, like, Working With Lemons or whatever, I feel like they did a better job, uh, like, making a live-action version of these songs than the actual Hollywood movie itself. Um, anyway... <laughs> Also, almost all of the characters in this movie are annoying and have, like, no development. Um, like, Jared is annoying and rude for literally no reason. Joking about mental health, saying that, like, it's sad if it has no friends or that therapy is ill, all this sort of stuff. And it brings that, like, what, what is the messaging that they're trying to portray? Uh, and the only reason he is there is for Evan to explain the plot to him. Uh, and he was just gay just for diversity and to hell with everything else about the character or the plot. Like, that, what do we learn about him? Why is he there? Um, and Alana is also just there just to move the plot along in regards to the Connor project and stuff. And the only song she does have uh, where she explains her anxiety is great in context, but that, 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 that's it. Not even to mention that like, these new songs are added are pretty good, but they're added instead of the songs that are actually very important to the plot and, and the actual understanding of these characters. Uh, like, does anybody have a map? Uh, and Good For You. Uh, and like all these songs that actually help you create a relationship with these characters. And there's actually other songs that hold Evan accountable. And so, of course, they cut that one out. Uh, although songs like Two Back in a Glove can go, I never liked that song to begin with. <laughs> and also not to mention just how damaging uh, that Alana's actions were by posting like the letter online and stuff. Uh, the only exceptions to this are Zoe, who is very complicated, like, in regards to uh, Requiem and, uh, and, you know, her relationship with Connor and stuff and, and her killing herself. Uh, and Cynthia, who is very empathetic, but like, th th that's it. And, and it just makes you less interested in the actual movie. Additionally, uh, they make you see why Evan feels guilted into this lie, though that still doesn't justify his manipulation for his own gain. It does provide a very good way of him trying to make up for the family at the end uh, by definitely showing some genuine effort to help uh, rebuild and grow and learn more about Connor, which was definitely a much-needed ending in the musical and this movie, and somewhat redeemed his actions. And it does show how empathetic Cynthia is uh, by not letting Evan ruin his own life by revealing the secret, but 
it gives him no consequences for his actions whatsoever, other than people like looking at him weirdly in the school hall. And they do a great job of making you empathise with him wanting a family, especially in that scene when you know he's joking around with them. But that doesn't justify his actions for manipulating them for his own gain, nor does it even justify the movie's manipulation of making you empathise with the character. His reasoning is very well shown, but that doesn't mean that it was okay what he did, nor that he should be excused because he may be mentally going through a lot. However, his actions aren't entirely condoned either, and he admits that he doesn't deserve forgiveness, and from the beginning you even realise that he never meant to hurt the family, he just saw that they were grieving and didn't want to upset them and, and therefore gave into this lie, otherwise he would have heartbroken them if he told them the truth that he was never friends with Connor. He never meant to purposely take advantage of them for his own gain, but he still did that anyway, and he should still face accountability for his actions. What started off as a blatant lie, he keeps digging and digging, and he just can't get out of it, and keeps on making it worse for himself. And I get that he has anxiety, and therefore just kept talking and couldn't stop himself, but come on, that excuse only goes so far when you've ruined lives. And the lie goes on so much more than it needs to. And even once you get to the climax, while I love World's Fail and his acting in it is great, the song really takes you out of the moment. Like, that was just not the right time, in my opinion. And also, the portrayal of mental health is dangerous as f Joking about depression and just randomly mentioning medication that they take is bad enough as it is, but they don't accurately represent these issues. Sure, the message that you will be found and that you're not alone is incredible, don't get me wrong. I'm sure the writers definitely had good intentions with this, but rather than demonstrating how these issues affect Evan and how he can reach out for help, they show his manipulation as a tactic to feel better, as well as completely glossing over a mentioning suicide attempts for a stupid song like So Big So Small, which was still sweet, don't get me wrong, but just not the right time. And even Connor is a plot device in this movie, used to just push along Evan's storyline. And even with Evan, who has the argument with his absent mother, she brings up the point that it's fine to have therapy and then Evan treats it as if he has a problem and needs to be fixed. Yes, people with mental health issues may feel this way, but this movie never outright condemns this ideology and instead just ends with, who knows where he is mentally? And I don't even know what I'm supposed to feel after watching his mental health evolution, even if I was pretty emotional during words fail. Although I will say that Evan's social anxiety was portrayed very well, and um, particularly through Ben's acting, and there were also some pretty dumb moments, uh, like how Heidi did not know that Evan was hurting, or when Eva says to Alana that you don't act like a depressed person. Like, what? However, it was very important that it raised this issue in the first place, and I think it had the same controversy with uh, 13 Reasons Why and stuff. They both raised awareness uh, for these issues, and I guess kind of portrayed how not to show it uh, in movies and uh, media and stuff, but yeah. And also the humour in this movie was terrible as well, and I, it, nothing really uh, landed for me. Uh, so let's just get on to the conclusion. In conclusion... Look, Dear Evan Hansen is a major mixed bag for me. Its cast and its songs are absolutely incredible. And at times, the story is very emotional if you get invested and don't actually think about the messages it is portraying. There are many intense moments that keep you engaged, and the performances only enhance this. However, it flaws in its poor musical visions and character development. Despite good intentions, or I assume at least, uh, the messaging you get from the show is often confusing, uh, specifically by the end. Its portrayal of mental health is very dangerous, even if there are uh, some moments that do have optimistic scenes. Evan's actions are extremely complicated, as he did do terrible things, but they never entirely condone these actions either, nor did they properly hold him accountable, even if they were only used to bring out the best in Evan's family. The argument could be made that it is one-sided in showing only Evan's perspective, although I also feel like he himself didn't like lying and he knew he was in the wrong. Um, and Ben Platt's age and physical appearance and hunching over and everything definitely takes you out of the performance of believing the story, although you cannot deny that his emotional acting is incredible and that he has the voice of an angel. And nepotism and ego and shit is a whole different story altogether. Um, look, therefore, it's it's complicated. Uh, I don't think it's entirely bad. Uh, so I'm going to give this movie a 6 out of 10. It's enjoyable as a musical if you don't consider objectively the issues discussed at hand. But it has obvious glaring flaws. Now, to answer the main question in the title, does it deserve the hatred it's been getting? 
No, definitely not. But are many criticisms valid? Definitely. It's not a terrible movie, uh, but most definitely not the best movie, or even just the best movie musical that I've seen this year. However, I do suggest that you see it for yourself before making judgments. If you can get past the look of a 30-year-old playing a teenager, at first I thought that, that would be easy to ignore once you, you know, get stuck into the story, but no, it's, it's there throughout the whole movie. Uh... <laughs> But I still hope that you have heard the arguments I have made in this video and will take that into consideration. Uh, and if you have seen the movie, let me know in the comment section down below whether or not you agree or disagree uh, with me on anything. And if you do want to see more movie reviews, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications so you guys know when I next upload a video. I know I said in my last video uh, that I won't be seeing Dear Evan Hansen until cinemas reopen, but I decided to um, watch it on your favourite um, <coughs> uh, parts of the Caribbean sites. <coughs> Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for my DC Phantom uh, video in a few weeks. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time. My name is Jordan, and I'm out. Bye! Ah!